Yes, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm David Hughes, the Chief Product and Technology Officer for Aruba, and uh, we're excited to share um, some of the exciting things we're doing um, here this morning. Um, you know, I think as a backdrop, it's really uh, a lot of changes happened in the last year or two, and companies are reimagining their workplace, thinking about how to get that right balance between um, allowing people that are working remotely to be as productive as possible, but also allowing teams to come together physically so that you can get the benefits of both. Um, this means redesigning um, spaces for collaboration. So many companies, and Aruba included, are renovating their spaces to make them um, more amenable to group meetings, making it for, that's for teamwork, allowing hoteling, having a lot of mobility in the office. And obviously that drives the importance of Wi-Fi connectivity. You know, a second important aspect in this rethinking of the office is creating a more level playing field between those that are remote and those that are in the office. I'm sure, you know, before COVID, you all had the experience of being the one guy that's, or girl, that's calling into the meeting and there's 20 other people in the room. It wasn't, wasn't a very good experience. Um, over the last, few year, um, couple of, uh, last couple of years, we've got a lot of practice using tools like Zoom and uh, being able to work better as a virtual group. But as we go back to the office, we need to make sure that we kind of keep that balance and keep that level playing field between those that are remote and those that, um, that are at work and make sure both sides can be um, productive. Now to the third point, one of the ways of doing this is to leverage digital tools. So I think in this coming year, we're gonna see companies rather than investing in celebrity chefs and gyms and all these physical things in their offices, they're gonna be investing in tools that enable this digital collaboration on-site and off-site. It's gonna be driving more bandwidth, driving more um, need for Wi-Fi. And so we're gonna be sharing with you today some of the solutions that we are bringing to market to help with that. The other aspect here in terms of, you know, eliminating that divide between those that are, are remote and those that are in the office is having a seamless experience for both the IT person who's operating the network, but also for the user. So whether they're on the road, um, um, joining the meeting from a um, coffee shop or the airport, whether they're at home, or whether they're in the office, we want them to have a consistent experience and a secure connectivity. So for work from anywhere, for the person on the road, we have our VIA VPN solution. For someone working from home, they could use the VPN, but an, a new way of doing things is to have a remote AP with WAN connectivity. And so we're gonna show you what we're doing in terms of micro branch or branch of one, um, bringing the, um, office experience where you open up your laptop and you see your work SID and there you are, you're on the corporate network, bringing that experience into your home. And then finally, of course, in the office, the, um, the need for access points and making it easy. So wherever you are, you open your laptop, you look at your device, you're on the network, you're good to go. All of this is uh, controlled via um, central so that we have one set of policies and we have AI operations to help debug um, problems, particularly, you know, I think one of the challenges in this new environment for IT is being able to debug problems that people are having remote in their home. How do we go about isolating and, and narrowing down those things? And so we're gonna to talk today about some of the tools we have um, for helping with that problem. Regardless of how you're getting on that network too, we want the same policies and the same enforcement. So going through um, firewalling capability, making sure that we are um, protecting the users no matter where they are. Hey, David, yes. you mentioned central there um, and it, it seemed kind of well central to the, the slide. Is central now a requirement to be able to do things like wraps and, and small branches? Can you no longer run? A controller and airwave and not have the central subscription? That's a good question. I know I think Aruba's always been about giving our customers choice. So we do support customers who want to be all on-prem. So we continue to support airwave. We also recently announced central on-prem. 
It's more targeted at large enterprises that want that want to have central, but they want to have it controlled and in their environment. So we've got two on-prem um, choices for customers. But going forwards, we do see that um, Aruba Central is a spearhead of what we're doing. And we're going to be designing for a cloud native experience first, and then looking at how we bring that um, on-prem. So yes, we we, you know, I think you'll see the majority of our customers move into central but we do want to give choices to people that for whatever reason, maybe because of the industry they are in, are either slower or effectively unable to adopt a cloud-based management system. Which brings me maybe to this slide, unless uh, someone else wants to inject a question while we're, while we're paused here. Um, the um, Aruba Central is really the, the, um, the management system that controls our edge services platform. So the edge services platform or ESP, we launched about this time last year. The idea is that we see the where we add value going well beyond networking. The architecture has three layers. The first layer or the connect layer is really where traditional networking starts and ends. So in the connect layer is all the physical connectivity, the wireless APs, our switches, our SD branch and SD WAN gateways. It's also where devices are. But beyond that, we're seeing it's really important not just to connect people, but also to protect. And so in the protect layer, we're delivering edge to cloud security. It's where authentication happens, where we do policy enforcement, where we have unified threat management and so on. And then the third layer in ESP is the analyze and act layer. That's where we do orchestration and analytics. It's about taking all that data from the network and being able to drive insights and drive closed loop control, as you'll see later on. We want to be able to be continually optimizing our network to stay in alignment with your goals and your policy. This all comes together with Aruba Central as a single plane of glass to manage us across all of the locations that we talked about, from remote home branch through to cloud and data center. The other important piece is we want to make sure that customers um, can consume our technology in a way that suits them. So of course we support the traditional model where you buy hardware and software licenses and then pay maintenance. But we have a whole spectrum of other offer, offer, offerings in our as a service um, catalog. So we can make it so that you pay for everything monthly, including the hardware. We can also help you by bundling that monthly payment with um, higher levels of support. And so we see as a service is also being a really aspect, an important aspect of ESP. So um, I know um, I'm, under yeah, connect, um, sorry, under connect I see I, the IoT. So how does the IoT piece fit into the hybrid workplace solution? Yeah, that's a, a great question. You know, I think when it comes to IoT, the um, a lot of people are really focused on the users. And even you'll notice I'm talking a lot about the users today and connecting from the office, connecting from home. You have everybody talking about SASE, Secure Access Service Edge. It's all about users connecting to their apps. But we overlooking when we do that, that even in 2021, there's five times as many devices as users, as human users. And so it's very important when we're designing the network, and we don't talk about that so much today, but it's very important to keep in mind all of those devices and designing a network that allows them to connect, but most importantly, to keep everything secure. So I think we all recognize that IoT devices are definitely a weak link in the chain. If you have many, many kinds of devices, the chances that at some point one of those devices is hacked is pretty high. And so when we think about designing for IoT and digital transformation, I think the most important thing is having a network that is segmented in a very fine-grained way. So if someone hacks the video surveillance camera, they can't see the point of sale system or they can't see the HR applications. In fact, in our digital, um, in our um, zero trust based dynamic segmentation architecture, the only thing that you could see if you hack the camera is the video surveillance head end. Basically, we limit each endpoint so it can only talk to the other endpoints um, that are required to get that role, to get that job done. Um, so that's 
definitely another whole exciting area. Um, I don't know how much we're going to get to that today, but um, what we do have on the agenda is looking first at the hybrid workplace. How do we go into more detail about how we um, secure all those remote users and how we increase the visibility for the IT operator? Then we're going to talk about our automated AI ops and the idea of a closed loop problem resolution system, looking at how we can help you all the way through from day zero to day in. And then third up, we're going to do a deep dive on our Wi-Fi 60 access points and how we make tri-band work um, better than anybody else. So lots of exciting content here. Um, at this point, unless there's another question. I, I've got um, a question. Okay. When you talk about offering uh, solutions as a service, is that a traditional OPEX only consumption model or is that like some of your competitors where there's this heavy CapEx up front in order to offset the cost of the hardware and then quote unquote as a service is just a recurring monthly cost in order to keep that up and running? Yeah, so we, we actually have a lot of flexibility there. So we can do both, but in particular, yes, we can do the one where everything's monthly and the monthly um, payment includes the hardware. So there is no big upfront um, cost. Um, that's certainly one way that we can do things. And I think that is um, really interesting to people. They want to be able to convert all of their spend, including the spend in hardware into pure OPEX. And so we have, um, offers that let them do that. And, and is that financed through like an Aruba financing arm or is that done through some sort of other banking system or what's the, what, how do, what's the dollars behind that look like? Yeah, I, 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 one important piece in that is HPE financial services. So, you know, that's okay. where it's really great. You know, Aruba, we try, we're an agile company and uh, we still try to keep our um, startup spirit alive. Um, and, um, but one of the great things about being part of a bigger company like HPE is you can tap into their financial resources and the ability to do things like what HPE financial services has. So it's kind of a best of both worlds in that sense.